Century Remarkable Entertainment, coming to you almost live with your host for tonight, Mr. Barth Gimble. Tonight, Barth's guest will be Congressman William Chambers, who claims the country is leaking badly, and, and Lucy Campbell, to explain why falling in love could be almost as dangerous as falling in the bathtub. And happy kind and the mirth makers. And me, I'm Jerry Hubbard. And now came up so suddenly, I didn't know what was going on. I was trying to see if gum burns. It doesn't. So, <laughs> kind of interesting. Good evening, and welcome again to Firmament Tonight. I am Barth Kimball. Thank you. You know, wouldn't vacations be great if you didn't have to spend a whole trip completely surrounded by strangers? I mean, I mean wouldn't travel be more exciting if you could do it along with some of the with some friendly faces from the old hometown. Well, obviously, I wouldn't be wasting valuable time up here asking you these questions if I didn't already know the answers, okay? The answers are, of course, yes and yes. And those two words are the whole idea behind Fernwood Tonight Tours. Thanks to Dana Earl Suggs down at Vagabond Travel, where their motto, incidentally, is no personal checks, please. <laughs> Thanks to them, we're now able to offer you the vacation of a lifetime. How does this sound? A round trip via cross-country bus lines to anywhere in the continental U.S. with lavish one-week accommodations at any sleepy time in, where their <laughs> reputation is in their beds. <laughs> and you will be accompanied by the entire Fernwood Tonight gang. Huh? Pretty interesting. Happy and I up front in the first class section of the bus. And a, oh, Jerry Hubbard, here he is. <laughs> Hey, I'm excited about this. Great. So I say happy and I'll be up in first class, and for those of you who like to save money and travel coach, you know where you'll find Jerry, right in the back there. <laughs> you know, I like to sit near the back of the bus there. Usually that's where they're going to have a restroom on this oh, one. Oh, sure. I hope so. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It might be a long trip. But we like to sit, and me, I go with my friend Marty Martinson, and we'll sit back by the, uh, can I say John? And, um, I already said Marty, you just another name. <laughs> anyway, we'll sit there, and when someone comes down the aisle to go into the you-know-what, he'll say, uh, don't fall in, you know, not even moving his lips like that, so they don't know where the devil it came from. And when they come out, I'll say, uh, everything come out all right? <laughs> Trying to figure out who said it. We sit there like we don't know a thing, you know. <laughs> or sometimes I'll go to the person in front of me. <laughs> How on earth do you manage to act like you don't know a thing? Oh, right? I don't know. You know, we've been doing this for so long. Yeah, I should imagine. <laughs> anyway, here's the best part about this tour. <laughs> you choose the destination. You decide where the Fernwood Tonight tour goes. Mm. What could be fair? Uh, great. Yep. You want to go to Alaska? We'll put that on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we'll leave our hearts. <laughs> the Alamo? We'll forget it. <laughs> I could go on with No, we'll answer. remember the Alamo. Okay. Uh, when you send in your $50 reservation, just tell us where you want to go. And wherever gets the most votes, that's where the luxurious bus liner will be headed. Now, just in case your heart is really set on a particular place, that could happen, and you're tempted to maybe stuff that ballot box by sending in several reservations, each, of course, accompanied by that non-refundable $50 uh, deposit. <laughs> well, that's okay, too. But you better hurry, because Happy and I are already packing our bags, right, Hap? And Jerry's looking for his, right? That's right. <laughs> so remember, rush that $50 to Bus Ride with Barth, Fernwood tonight, <laughs> Post Office Box 78924, Fernwood, Ohio, 45989. And remember, Dr. Pepper is the unofficial drink of the Fernwood Bus Tour. Okay, that's great. And it'll be plenty of that on board. I Let's think. hope so. Enough to keep those people running back to the old uh, utilities there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you love sitting back there, don't you? Ooh, yes, yes. Right, them tail gunner back there. Uh, tail gunner? Yeah. That's great. Well, right now we'd like to bring on a guest. I'd like to bring our own happy kind over here, actually. Tell us about something that uh, is kind of exciting and possibly profitable, at least for him, if not for us. Happy, come on over. Happy. Happy you look almost as good as you as you sound, if that's possible. <laughs> that's great. Well, if there's a rosy glow exuding from me, it's just because I'm so excited. You know, just this week, 
Me and the Mirth Makers have cut our first record album. Beautiful really? album. Yes, and it's called Music in the Key of Mirth. Oh, here it is right here. Well, this is it. Right? You see that? Are we, are we getting that? Oh, that's great, yeah. Oh, happy. From here, I noticed that uh, there's an album cover, all right, but there's no album. Where's the, where's the record happen? Well, the, the problem is this, that we can't find anybody or any place in Fernwood to compress a record, you see. We've got plenty of vinyl because last weekend, the Mirth Makers and me, we went out and and uh, tore up all the vinyl tile in our kitchen and the bathroom, so we got plenty of vinyl. But uh, so far, all we've got is the uh, tape that we recorded at Channel 6 here, mm -hmm. and uh, a thousand record albums. Well, at, at that rate, Happy, it seems like all the folks are really going to get for their $5.98 is a, sort of a placemat with a rather unappetizing looking picture of you on it here. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. If you would look inside here, you will see. Oh, well, there is something. Yes. With each record, we're going to give a certificate like this, you see. Mm -hmm. With each record, they get a certificate for a Jumbo Runner Bunner Burger. Down at the Bun and Run. And also... Oh, don't lose that. That's worth the, yeah, the burger. Right. I guess. That's, you can get one of that. And they also, we have a certificate here for the cleaning of one tooth of your choice at uh, my game. <laughs> free, free. It's no charge. No charge at all. I think that's going to be a great deal for a beaver, wouldn't it? <laughs> Whoa, right on the money, Happy. That's great. My next guest uh, visits us whenever he's back home in his constituency. I guess that whole business there is forgotten, pretty much, that thing about the absentee ballots. Let's hope so, yes. Yeah. Let, let he's he's certain, <laughs> certainly comfortable enough to come back and visit us so he couldn't be too, too ashamed. Um, he's probably one of our most resourceful congressmen, and tonight he has some news about yet another insidious conspiracy. Please welcome Congressman William Chambers. Well, welcome once again. Congressman, why don't you tell us about this uh, new conspiracy? What's it all about? Well, what it's about, Barth, is uh, about the most basic element to mankind, about the most basic need to man. What I'm talking about is, is water. I mean, the world faces oh. a, an ever-increasing water shortage. And uh, while most nations are claiming that their, their water supplies are disappearing, Many nations are, are actually increasing their water supplies. No kidding. Now, nations like, uh, like the Soviet Union, huh. Finland, Norway, oh yes, and even Canada. Yes, yes, they, now these are the mostly ice-bound nations. They're, they're laden with, uh, with streams and lakes, and especially glaciers. Hmm. They are water-rich. <laughs> and I have found out that these countries have banded together to form an organization called... WOPEC. <laughs> Water owners, Potesny, Espionazzi countries. Excuse me, I have to play the uh, ignoramus here. What does Potesny, uh, whatever that was, what, what do those two words mean? Well, I don't really know. The Russians like to get a couple of their words in there, you know. <laughs> But, but this is an international conspiracy of countries trying to capitalize on this, on this water problem. Mm. Hmm. I bet I know how Canada is doing it. Hockey. <laughs> hockey. Just think about it. Where are all the professional hockey players from? Canada. Canada. But where are all the professional hockey leagues right here in the USA and also the hockey rinks? Night after night in cities all over the United States for nine months of the year, they're filling up these hockey rinks, flooding them in the water, freezing them. The hockey players come down, skate on them, ruin the water. Then what do they do? They melt the water, drain it out, free fill it night after night. It's just a, an everlasting uh, uh, conspiracy to, for, by the Canadians to drain our dwindling supply of water. <laughs> Jerry, why don't you figure out which tooth you want cleaned while I talk to you? Congressman Chambers, what is really... Also, also, now wait a second, the Mexicans, I bet, I bet they're in on it too, you know why? There's a shortage of water in so uh, Southern California, but no shortage of Mexicans. These illegal <laughs> infiltrate into our part of the country, and they work on the farms, and, and as gardeners, and in, uh, in the fields. What do they do there? They water, they sprinkle, they have in charge of the hoses. <laughs> so they also are Mexicans, due to the extra hot and spicy diet they consume. <laughs> 
five times, and I'm quoting generally, four to five times the amount of water that the United States of America people have to drink. And also, who are the people behind most of the Mexican restaurants? They are, again, the Mexicans trying to search this Mexican food, keeping us forever on the run in our search for new... Okay, so they don't waste water in showers, you know, but I'm saying there's also the Mexican saboteurs. Yeah, Jerry, and I expect you probably think they buy those old beat-up 57 Chevys just so they'll overheat and they can fill up their radiators. <laughs> Is that right, Jerry? No, that's a little far-fetched. <laughs> Bear with us, Congressman. Um, what you're saying is that once the rest of the world runs out of water, which is inevitable, I guess, by what you're saying, all these Wolpec nations are going to start gathering their icebergs, melting them down, and exporting the water around the world at high cost. Oh, that? yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Pretty soon you're going to see water shipped in super tankers around the world. Whoa, that's going to be a problem, too. If one of these ships or tankers runs aground, you're going to have a huge water spill. All that fresh water in the ocean, polluting it, killing our fish, washing up on the beaches. You can save these up till you have enough to clean all your teeth. constituents are watching this program to gather up how important this situation is. They maybe were. Um... <laughs> Jerry, you're not going to be running for office, are you? No. <laughs> no that's not an issue. Well, that's good. Um, it seems to me that this business of the icebergs, even though there's only one-tenth of it we know about now, you're saying they're going to be chipping the stuff up. That's I've heard of sending out for ice, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm afraid, Bart, that the profiteering in this uh, water situation is, is already going on, already started. We have reason to believe that the Wolpec nations are towing icebergs to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's sort of out there. I mean, that's certainly going farther than your liquor store for ice, isn't it? Water is power, and it won't be uh, a matter of time before the world is taken over by one race. Right, and we all know who that race is? The Eskimos. <laughs> the Arabs are going to look like hikers compared to those Eskimos. Can you picture them standing around in our gambling casinos with those uh, fur hats and rubbing noses with each other? Spending our money and rubbing our noses in it and, uh, and, and buying their way into their big corporations. Can you picture them running into sex to buy parkas and into Tiffany's to buy these harpoons? <laughs> now we'll be squirming with our parched lips at the negotiating table. Imagine someday these lips will be swollen and parched shut. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Congressman, for, uh, for sharing these wonderful insights with us. Uh, Congressman Chambers is always good for this kind of thing. She's trying to show us the rational side of some rather startling news. And I hope you don't uh, get discouraged and decide to wash your hands of it. <laughs> we'll be right back. here with Congressman Chambers, and uh, sorry we didn't have enough time to really talk about what... So am I. I know how you feel. Uh, those of you who read last Friday's edition of the Fernwood Inquiring Gazette, or the Fig, as we call it, uh, you're probably familiar with the tender and moving love story of Fernwood's own Ed and Lucy Campbell. Well, we looked for them everywhere. We found them. We have them here tonight. Let's bring them out here so they can all tell you about their story. <laughs> Thank you. 
You may remember uh, Congressman Chairman? How do you do? Uh, Chambers, rather, the little lever you pulled last November? That's him. Oh. Well, you certainly seem like a pretty lovey-dovey couple here. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Why don't you tell your folks, uh, tell all these folks here the fascinating love story of yours? You want to tell? Go ahead, sugar. Okay, hon. <laughs> well, 15 years ago, we were going steady, and Ed kept asking me to marry him over and over again. <laughs> Got down on my knees the whole bit. Oh, boy. <laughs> but I just wasn't sure, so I kept saying no. Then one time I saw her with this guy downtown, and I thought, hey, she's playing around with another guy. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out to be my cousin. Yeah, but I wasn't aware of that at the time, so I got real jealous and mad. <laughs> What'd you do? I ran her over with my tow truck. <laughs> 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 well, so run her over first, then ask questions, huh? Yeah, well, uh, in prison I had a chance to think about uh, what I had done. So for the next 10 years, I sent her letter after letter after letter, begging forgiveness. Oh, and I kept tearing them up. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So to cut what seems like it's going to be a rather lengthy story short, uh, and you finally got paroled, set free, and you tried to rekindle this relationship. Is that right? Yeah, well, he called and wanted to meet me, and I was pretty scared. Sure. <laughs> but then we met for coffee, and... Suddenly, it hit me. Another truck? <laughs> no, I, I just figured that here was a man who was really in love with me. Oh. I mean, he'd rather see me dead than with another man. <laughs> I said, Lucy, he's for you. <laughs> I promised I'd love her for the rest of my life to make up for what I did. That's wonderful. She needed a whole lot more than the insurance money she got. Uh, she needed somebody to take care of her. Well, you're the man. You're the man. How much uh, did she uh, actually get from the insurance money? Half a million. <laughs> but when you get right down to it, when you think about it, half a million is nothing without love. So we got married, and Ed surprised me with a honeymoon. Oh. Yeah, I rented a whole week at a honeymoon suite in Niagara Falls. <laughs> Fortunately, we weren't able to stay the whole week. How come? Why not? Well, we were taking a stroll over the falls, and I stopped to look over the rail. And the rail gave way, and I fell right <laughs> over the edge. It was horrible. <laughs> and the falls is beautiful this time of year. <laughs> Luckily, I was able to grab hold of a branch mm -hmm. while Ed disappeared to get help. <laughs> so it's more like Lucy Falls than Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> It is beautiful this time of year. Um, you think at Niagara Falls, they'd actually they'd, they'd make those rails a little stronger, wouldn't you? Yeah, but well, after a passerby rescued me, we discovered that someone had sawed through the railing. Oh. <laughs> Probably some prankster. Yeah. Well, Lucy survived it, so I didn't get any insurance money, but we sued the city of Niagara Falls for a pretty penny. <laughs> Lucy was so shook up, we decided to just come back to Ohio and live on our new ranch. Well, that's great. So although your, your, your honeymoon was, was cut short, you did have uh, each other and a big new dream house. That's fabulous. Oh, hi. Except we had to move after a while. <laughs> Why? Why was that? Well, uh, the ranch house burnt to the ground, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have all the luck, don't you? Well, Eddie was out of town, and I was home all alone, when suddenly there was this huge explosion right in the middle of the bedroom. By some fluke of fate, I just had gotten up to go to the bathroom, and I barely got out of here. Yeah, she got away with burns on only 30% of her body. <laughs> Fortunately, that 30% was insured. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out why a fluke would make you go to the bathroom. You say it was like just some fluke you went to the bathroom. I'm just saying Of course. Well, um, exactly what, what did happen? Uh, it was a faulty gas line. Yes, yeah, somehow a trace of sulfuric acid got into the gas line. Uh, probably another prankster. Yeah. Or maybe one of those... Uh, could have been one of those freak sulfuric acid, uh, acid accidents you hear about all the time. They're always happening. That's what Ed said. Sure he did. And he knows about them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Does he knows about those things puttering around the house all the time? Real handyman, huh, Ed? Uh, actually, I'm I'm pretty much all thumbs. Really? <laughs> you know, there's this redness in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ed was doing some plumbing. We had a stopped up sink or something, and there I was, like a dope, standing right behind him, and the next thing I know, I get a face full of liquid plumber. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, I guess it could happen to anybody, though, when oh, you think about honestly, it. Honestly, honestly, with the bad luck I've been having, I don't know how this man puts up with me. <laughs> I, I feel so guilty about being such a burden. Hmm. Well, I don't think you will be for long. I have a... <laughs> What is, what is next for you, uh, two lovebirds? I mean, after your eye heals there. Oh, Ed's taken me on another honeymoon since the first one didn't work out so good. Yeah, we're going up to the state of Washington to do a little mountain climbing. <laughs> Just Lucy and me. Yeah, I figured. Uh, um, Ed, um, good idea. I guess as for you, Lucy, I would uh, make sure I check out those uh, those ropes they have up there. Ropes? Make sure. That, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll take care of that. Yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> Did you people drive down here tonight? Oh, uh, yeah, he did. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back after this word. Thank you. Just got time to say goodnight to my guests. Uh, well, we have a little more time than that. In fact, it's... Any of you would like to say goodnight to one person out there that you're thinking of tonight? Congressman Chairman, you want to say, say goodbye to someone? <laughs> yes. Good night, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> I'd like to say goodnight to Happy Kind, our wonderful band leader, and goodnight to all of you. That's it. So long.